this is Inside the UCC Group Leadership in Action podcast with your hosts, Laura Butler and Jay Maney. This podcast will share groundbreaking initiatives by the university and speak with leading educators, business leaders, and entrepreneurs that are paving the way for growth, transformation, and success. Welcome to the UCC Leadership in Action podcast. I'm Laura Butler. And I'm Jay Maney. And Laura, I've got to share with you that I am so thrilled about having this next episode with you and with our guest today. I understand graduation is coming soon and there are some individuals that are outstanding individuals that are going to be presented with awards. And I'm just so happy to have them here on the podcast with us to share their wisdom and today is no different as we have the Honorable Godfrey Dyer. Now, the Honorable Godfrey Dyer is a celebrated hotelier and chair of several tourism bodies, including the Tourism Enhancement Fund, and is a distinguished governor of the Kiwanis movement in the Eastern Caribbean and Canada. He's also been involved in a range of entrepreneurial pursuits, which I love that, including the Wexford Court Hotel, Hot 102 radio station. I'm a radio station host, so I like him already. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and he's the co-founder of Sumfest. Uh, he holds the National Award Order of Jamaica for exceptional contribution for tourism. So, Laura, we're loaded up with an outstanding yes. individual and I'm excited to, to get him started. Uh, Godfrey Dyer, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. My pleasure to be with you. Before we get started, I, I want to ask you, how do you feel to be receiving the UCC Doctorate Award? I must say very elated. It's, it's one of the shocks in my life. Hmm. And I have I've not had many shocks. <laughs> but, but, but when I was called and told, I just couldn't believe it because... It's not one of the dreams I've had. And mm. when it came, it was a pleasant surprise. What do you think are UCC's strengths as, uh, any, as a, a university? Uh, you know, UCC is one of these universities that it's very outstanding. When you look at the age of UCC in comparison to many other universities, you wonder how they have come so far. The quality of leadership that they have, the number of campuses across the island. Um, I gathered they, they graduated the last public graduation they had, that it was nearly a thousand uh, graduates. Uh, that's fantastic. That's a major achievement. Congratulations to all the graduates that will be listening to our program. And, you know, I want to help them to understand a little bit about your journey, Mr. Dyer. So tell us, how did you get into the tourism industry? You know, I, I started out as a policeman. I, I joined the police force. I served three years as a regular Red Scene policeman. Then I, I took a test um, an exam and moved to what they call special branch, which is like your secret service in the US. Yes. And, and I served in that section for uh, 10 and a half years. And after 13 and a half years altogether in the police force, I was now in Montego Bay, having transferred to Montego Bay 10 years before that. Montego Bay, heart of tourism, I saw many things happening in tourism, rent a car, villa rental, hotel business, but hotel was out of my realm. <laughs> but I started looking at rent a car and I looked at the villa business and with adopted brother who was in teaching, I invited him to Montego Bay. We borrowed money from the bank. We bought a, a couple of cars. He started managed in a, a, a rental car business. It grew. I resigned from the force, saw the opportunity, and I thought the rental car was not enough for both of us. So I started a villa management. Um, I was observing the villa operation before, 
And I started the villa management in 1972 with one villa. And after about six months, people saw me doing well with it, came to me, added to the villa, the number of villas I'm managing. And within the first three years, I was managing 40 villas. Wow. Bringing in my own charters. I remember uh, for three consecutive years, I brought in a flight carrying 211 passengers back to back for 12 weeks for those three winters, staying in my villas. So I really expanded in the villa business. And whilst uh, this was now by 1976, I was approached by the owner of Wexford Court, which was only 16 rooms, including six one bedroom apartments. And the owner said to me, can I help him? He's, been, he's not doing well. Could I help him with some business? I looked at it, told him what to do, what to put together to upgrade the property. And then I started sending him business. He started doing very well. And six months later, he said, why don't I buy the property from him? Uh, I laughed, of course, because I, I, and we started negotiation and I got him down to two thirds of what he wanted for it. And with a payment plan over a two year period, I thought if I had two years, I could build a name to go to the bank to get some money. And it happened. Yes. And, you know, so over the next 29 years, I increased the room from 16 to 66 rooms. And it turned out to have been one of the best, if I say it myself, operated small hotels and one of the most profitable. I run one of the highest occupancies on the island. During your years serving as president of the Jamaica Hotel and Tourist Association, JHTA, 1983 to 1984, and again in 2000, can you talk about your role in setting up the Jamaica Retained Account? Uh, that was an interesting thing. We're, we're talking now about 82, 83, somewhere there. And the Jamaican dollar was devaluing daily. And the prime minister at the time, Honorable Mr. Siaga, called in all tourists, all tourism um, people who are involved in the industry to Jamaica House. And it was a Friday, I remember that. And he, it was about 75 of us. And he called us in to tell us as of Monday, all our earnings, foreign exchange earnings, will have to be turned over to the Bank of Jamaica. And the Bank of Jamaica will then pay us the JA dollar for it. Uh, the room was silent. I got up as the president. I'm the one supposed to speak. And I told the prime minister, with respect, sir, we cannot cooperate with you. We are not prepared to turn over our money to Bank of Jamaica and then go back and line up to get money to bring in things for our hotels unless something proper is worked out. We are not prepared to cooperate. Everybody yes. expect the prime minister to run me out of the room. And I sat down and the room was silent. And the prime minister said, Mr. Dyer, would you be willing to sit down and meet with the governor of the Bank of Jamaica tomorrow to discuss the detail? I said, yes, sir, we will be willing. The following day, we met with the governor. And after about four or five hours of negotiation and discussion, we decided a company would be set up, the Jamaica Retained Account. Mm -hmm. And it would be set up in a bank in Miami. The minimum will be kept in that account is 3 million US, which the industry will have access to whenever it wants. No lineup. It should not go beyond 3 million US. And all the details. And that retained account was the process. We were able to keep the dollar steady for quite a few years. Which is very important. Now, Mr. Dio, having previously owned the Wexford Port Hotel, expanded and operated it for over 29 years. Can you tell us about what you found most challenging and most rewarding? 
Uh, challenging was to compete and compete with a small hotel as against larger hotels. You have to ensure that your service is tops, your accommodation is the best, everything, and you have to have the best staff. I was lucky to have had the best staff. I had a staff of 69. Yes. And they were excellent people. Some of them worked for me for 26 of those 29 years. We, as I mentioned before, were able to run very high up Francis, better than many other hotels, and very decent rates as well. So we, we, it, it was, th those were the challenges, but the reward was that we got good occupancies, we got good rates, and even today, several years later, we had one of the most popular restaurants in Montego Bay. Yes. If you if you were staying in another hotel, and you went to the front desk and asked, where could I get some good Jamaican food? They would be sending you to Wexford Court. Yes. And, and even uh, two days ago, I was somewhere and somebody was saying, Godfrey, when are you going back to Wexford so we can get some good food? <laughs> <laughs> you know, Mr. Dyer, to also retain your staff for almost the same length of time, 20 odd years is telling of your leadership and the kind of staff support that was there. So that is truly commendable. Thank you so much. Mr. Dai, I really appreciate the fact that, as I mentioned earlier, you co-founded the popular Hot 102 radio station, and you served as its executive director for over 25 years. What inspired you to go into broadcasting after having prior experiences in nothing that dealt with broadcasting? <laughs> you know, there was a regional radio station owned by the government, and the government decided to divest. And I said to a colleague, why don't you let us go for it? And he agreed. And both of us applied and we put in all the things. Many people applied, but my colleague and I got it. And we moved it from a regional station to a national station. And we got to the stage where we competing. We were a number two radio station out of 10 in the island. That's incredible. Uh, that, that's just a, a real strong story of, to be quite frank with you, vision and confidence in your ability to, to make some things happen. And that sort of dovetails, uh, quite frankly, into your, your broad array of entrepreneurial experiences and, and corporate experiences ranging from different industries, whether it's education, tourism, security, uh, business and management including being the founder and executive director of Summerfest Productions and all, also the original producer of Reggae Summerfest. Yes. All of, yeah, also all of this has contributed to your success, but out of all of these industries that you've been involved in, what industry would you say you've enjoyed the most? Uh, enjoying Summerfest was the most yes. enjoyable. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, but, indeed. But interesting was the hotel, mm. the tourism industry. I, I love the industry. The industry has done well for me. Even though I am supposed to be retired, I'm still involved in the industry. You're, you're a Jamaican to the core. Represent <laughs> your country well. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Tell me, what drives your commitment to the Kiwanis movement? Because I know you're heavily involved in that as well. Yeah, the Kiwanis, I started in 1970. I was still a policeman in Falmouth. And they started a new Kiwanis club there. And they came and invited me. I went to the first meeting, liked their philosophy, and started attending. And for whatever reason, they started pouring responsibilities on me from the first six months. By year three, I was president of the club. By year five, I was lieutenant governor. Mm. And by year eight, I was now governor with responsibility for 
Eastern Canada and 14 Caribbean islands. They have a distinguished award, which is given from the international level. Kiwanis was in 89 countries at the time with 46 districts in those countries. And each district is run by a governor. And if a governor meets certain minimum criteria, you would be awarded the distinguished position. Yes. My district for 15 years prior to my being there did not achieve the, the distinguished award. And when I got there and finished my year, I was awarded the distinguished governor for Eastern Canada and the Caribbean. Fantastic. I continued from there. And a year later, I was invited to be to the board of the Kiwanis International Foundation. And that foundation had a, a project to raise 75 million US dollars for a charity project. And my district, we were able to achieve about 35 million of that 75. And I served as a board member for five years. I was unanimously elected president of the Kiwanis International Foundation with responsibility in 89 countries. And to date, I am the only non-American to have held that position. Phenomenal, Mr. Dyer. I mean, your commitment and passion to serve speaks to the man you are. What have you found to be the most impactful experience that you have had to date? Uh, there are so many. Yes, yes. <laughs> there, there are so many. But it comes back to my first love, tourism. And the impact there, which I said still stays with me because I continue to serve. I know um, I'm the chairman of what is called the Tourism Enhancement Fund. That's a fund. I call myself the co-architect of that fund. The second time when I was president, the then Minister of Government of Tourism invited me to a meeting because we needed some funding to address deficiencies in tourism. And she and I sat down, I invited my council, and it took us about eight, nine months to convince the membership and the tourism community of the importance. And today, it's one of those in entities that everybody looks forward to. It is 15 years old. I have served on the board of the TEF for 10 of those 15 years. And eight of those years, I have been the chairman. And I yeah. continue to be the chairman. I also serve as the chairman of the Montego Bay Convention Center. Yes. One of the best convention centers in the Caribbean. Yes, indeed. When I owned the Miss World franchise, we moved the finals to the convention center for the first time in its history. Because yes. Actually, it being the tourism um, center yes. for, for Jamaica. What advice would you give to a student that is trying to figure out the career path to take? I, I would say to a student who is looking for a career. Firstly, try and identify something you love. However, many people do not get the chance to do the first thing they love. But whatever you get to start with, do it well. Be committed to it. Your word must be your bond. Yes. And one of the things in life that leads me to is time. I am one Jamaican never late for anything. Excellent. Anybody who ask in Jamaica that I've had to do, if there's a meeting on, and I am the chair of that meeting, everybody says you better be on time because Godfrey is going to start on time. Yes, very yeah. good. So to that student, be committed to whatever you decide to start with. And even if it's not what you want, use that as the stepping stone. Lay the proper foundation. People will see your example and probably create other opportunities for you. Very, very true. Thank you for that feedback for students. And, you know, it's great advice. And like you said, discipline, professionalism, respect for time, good time management. What positive changes have you seen specifically in Jamaica's 
tourism industry that has you excited and optimistic about the future? Uh, there are a number of changes. The quality of the tourism plants themselves, the hotels, significant improvement in the quality of hotels and what they offer. The employees, the quality of the employees, mm -hmm. the positions held by Jamaicans and the ownership in the industry by Jamaicans as well. Those are encouraging signs of the industry. And the industry is certainly doing well. Uh, we have gone through two years of COVID and our recovery rate, we are almost where we were in 2019. The recovery is tremendous. For Jamaica's popularity as one of the world's top tourism destinations. Uh, it's, and it certainly is. <laughs> uh, the, the expertise that lies here in management, in marketing, in all aspects of the industry. When we go to the marketplace, everybody recognizes us because we are outstanding wherever we go of the quality we bring to, to those markets and the service we offer here. Well, it's undeniable, right? And you don't earn the right to be one of the top tourist destinations around the world unless something is being done correctly and I believe that part of the recognition, the award of your receivings because of the work you've done to lay the foundation for that. Thanks. And I, as I said before, I, it came as a very big surprise, but a welcome. So mm -hmm. I certainly appreciate it. <laughs> Well, Mr. Dyer, thank you so much for being with us. You have shared the wide variety of industries that you're involved in, your awards and commitment to your country and your profession. And you've just done remarkably well, and you're certainly contributing to a very powerful legacy. And it was an honor to have you here, sir. And thank you so much for being so kind to me. <laughs> <laughs> and I enjoyed this interview with you all. Great. Thank you. Take Thank care. You. Bye. 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 Laura, there we have it. Just a fantastic conversation with Godfrey Dyer. There's no doubting why he was chosen again as an award winner here for his just, just incredible work that he's done. As you just mentioned, what an incredible resume that is so diversified with experiences that it's almost as if he's lived four or five or six lives within yes. one life. Isn't that true? Yes, absolutely. And, you know, it's, it's interesting, uh, the criteria of selection, because so far the, the awardees that we've been interviewing are just very impressive. And Mr. Dio is no different. He's just phenomenal. I mean, with the armed forces into business, into tourism, into music. I mean, some fest is pretty huge, Jay, you know, you're mm. Jamaica, but it's not. <laughs> and it was just, it was a great fun and it's a massive undertaking logistically and be involved with such a high profile, um, the various industries and to have done exceptionally well to date is just truly impressive. And I can see definitely why UCC selected Mr. Dyer as an awardee. Well, I want to let you know that I enjoy these episodes, Laura, so much because of the individuals that we have an opportunity to interview, to pick their brains, learn more about them. And I know that our listening audience appreciates that as well. So why don't you go ahead and wrap up our show, Laura? Yes, I would just like to, we'd like to congratulate all the graduates and wish you continued success on your journey. To our listeners, thank you so much for listening. Continue to keep safe and focused. I'm Laura Butler. And I'm Jay Mamie, reminding you that you can access this podcast not only on the UCC social media, but you can also access the podcast on all of our other platforms, on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify, also on Spreaker channels, and a number of different podcast platforms of your choice. You can find our show. And until next time, we'll speak soon.